Will you gaze into the depths, seeking the truth? Have you ever questioned the path being traveled? Do you ever long for the satisfying release of a clack? That feel when no water slide decals. These look cool though. That's right, I did the ASMR before the introduction. Say it with me, people. Real grade box art is bad. Welcome to Millennial Model Mayhem. My name is Liam, and as you've already seen, today I've got the real grade High New Gundam. You also probably noticed another model in the thumbnail, but I'll get more into that later. Isn't this just the same gimmick as last time? You build one model, you paint something else? Come on, Barbatos, it's totally different. Now don't interrupt me! Anyways, this model is very well engineered. Bandai did a really good job, and I had a lot of fun building it. I also have all the customizations I want to do planned out in my head, but I'm not actually going to be doing any of that in this video. Why is that exactly? Well, let's get into it. This kit met all the hype from the reviews I checked out, and the build experience was quite enjoyable. However, as I progressed further into the build, the customization process that I was planning out in my head became more intimidating. Right out of the box, this model already has so much to appreciate, and I definitely want to take my time to savor the process of bringing out all the details with color separation, masking, scribing, etc. There are also a handful of articulation and mechanical features to this kit that I have to consider whether to preserve when it comes to adding paint. I think it's really cool that there are opening hatch gimmicks, and of course the fin funnels on the backpack are really neat, but I also have a never-ending fear of chipping paint from moving parts. So overall, I've got a lot to consider with this project. Therefore, I'm making the call to finish some other projects I've got first, so that I can get some more practice in before I decide to tackle arguably the most complex model kit I've ever built. What you want to do and what you can do are different things. Doing what you can makes you a pro, and then you grow to love it. Kabe Nagata, My Solo Exchange Diary, page 88. Weep! Now I think it's time for the Wing Zero Redemption Arc. Previously on Millennial Model Mayhem. Hang on, Red Bull gives you wings. <laughs> oh, I thank you, Wing Gundam. When will it be my turn to be customized? 
Is my body nothing but a source of kit bashing material? Do not worry, small mecha. Come with us and we'll take care of you. Now, I haven't been kind to my real grade Wing Zero. I've only really used it for kit bashing and comedy sketches up till this point. So I think it deserves some attention and it's going to get transformed into my next Gamma Wolves project. If you're unfamiliar with Gamma Wolves, I have a playlist on my channel featuring all my other projects I've done for the game that you should totally check out. The Model Mayhem painting style that I use for my Gamma Wolves projects won't exactly be the kind of practice that I'm looking for for when I eventually customize the real grade high new, but I do also eventually need to finish both of my Gamma Wolves crews, so now is a great opportunity to get some work done for that. Also, I've got some fun details about one of the crews that I'll show off later on in the video. Okay, now before I get started on the kit bashing, I need to reorganize the Gundam graveyard. This needs to be like my minis bits box. Casually organized, good enough to kinda know where things are, but messy enough to simulate the sensation of sifting through a pile of Lego pieces. Some of the larger pieces wouldn't fit in the box, so I ended up separating the more complete sets into their own dedicated bags. Well, now that that satisfying task is done, Let's bash. I mostly restricted my kit bashing to use pieces from the real grade Astray gold frame Amatsumina because I think the aesthetics of the two go well together. And for a base, I'm using this 100mm product from Reaper Minis. For the shoulders, I'm using some pieces from the high grade God Gundam to fill in this circle area, which is funny because I definitely used the original circle pieces when I kit bashed the Red Bull God Gundam. The other pieces from the Amatsumina are being used to fill in the gap on the white circle pieces and add some extra detail to the back side of the shoulder. Next, I want to swap the knee armor of the wing with better looking pieces from the Amatsumina which is pretty easy thankfully because the wing kit has an easy contact point to glue the pieces to. Because this is meant to be a game piece with minimal articulation, I think it's a good excuse to use up some of these flimsy articulated hands that came with early real grade kits, so all I need to do is add the armor plates from the wing's hands then glue the swords on. Easy. The most complicated part comes last, which is to make a new backpack. The Wing Zero is really small compared to all my other kits, so I imagine its role in the Gamma Wolves crew is to be a light and nimble melee damage dealer. This, in addition to the amount of detail that was already present on the model, led me to gather mostly feet pieces from the Amatsumina to cut and glue together into a cute little booster pack. Now that I've improved the appearance of the Wing Zero and given it a way to close the distance with the enemy on the battlefield, I've got to sand away any gluing mistakes I made and begin the process of partially locking the pose in place for painting. Out of all the Gamma Wolves projects I've done so far, this one I found the most difficult to find a pose for. The engineering is a bit more complex than a high grade kit, but for this model I found that this aspect made it pretty flimsy and loose, especially in the legs. It didn't take long to figure out how I wanted the arms to be posed, but the legs and waist had a lot more small pieces that could be moved and it took a while to find the best compromise between locking pieces in place and leaving some flexibility that would risk paint rubbing off during any handling I do while painting. The painting process starts off with Vallejo Black Surface Primer via an airbrush. After that, I apply some thinned down secret weapon dark iron to the inner frame details that are showing. You may notice that I'm using a fancy dual action airbrush now instead of the single action one for my previous videos. This is thanks to Taz, aka Plamo Therapist. You should go watch our Kitbash collab video and then go subscribe to his channel after this. After airbrushing, I'm finishing the dark iron sections using Vallejo Game Color Gunmetal followed by Model Color Silver with two rounds of dry brushing. Once that messy business is done, it's time to get all the base coats for each color down. The foundations for my color scheme are Vallejo Game Color Imperial Blue and Earth, Model Color Violet Red, as well as that same surface primer from earlier. I'll explain my inspiration for the color scheme closer to the end. 
but this is definitely going to be my most vibrant mecha yet. Once I've given each color a few thin coats, I quickly put some gray surface primer down for the sections that I want to have glowing effects. Then it's time to paint the base to match all the other Gamma Wolves mechas. After grabbing my beloved gradient of P3 Coal Black, Meridius Blue, and Arcane Blue, I thought that since this will be my fifth time doing a base like this, I should time myself to see how fast I could finish one. Turns out that's about 90 minutes, which seems pretty good to me. Now that the base is done, it's time to carefully glue the partially reassembled Wing Zero down. I'm keeping the head and hand pieces separate because otherwise there would be some hard to reach areas with the brush. Before I get to glazing all the gradients, I finish the black sections with a basic edge highlight of P3 Coal Black that I gradually mix some white into as I paint progressively thinner lines, making sure that the brightest highlights at the end only focus on the corners and edges that would catch the most light. With the black sections done, it's time to work on all the colorful parts, starting with the blue. Before I can start working up the gradient, I use a mix of Imperial and Crystal Blue to edge highlight what is going to be the border for each gradient. Once the lines are down, it's time to grab the beloved Glaze Medium and work the gradient all the way up to a mix of Crystal Blue and Sky Blue. When it comes to picking the direction of each gradient, I'm still experimenting with adhering to how light from above would behave and alternating directions between adjacent panels. I'm not too concerned about having the shadows and highlights appear in a realistic manner. Model Mayhem style ain't about portraying realism. Speaking of being realistic though, if I've inspired you to do some hobby shopping of your own, and you would also like to support my content creation endeavors, I am now a part of Hobbylink Japan's affiliate program. So if you go through the links in the video description below and buy some stuff, you'll be able to earn me a small commission at no additional cost to yourself. I also have Amazon affiliate links for products that aren't on Hobbylink Japan. So please. I need money! When I'm painting like this, I see the process as having two basic stages. Glazing in the gradient, then tidying everything up with an edge highlight. The edge highlight should end up a bit lighter than the brightest highlight of the glazed section, so here that means starting with a mix of crystal and sky blue, then finishing with pure sky blue. After the blue is finished, I move on to the violet sections, which get an initial edge highlight mix of violet, red, and pink. Then, the glaze starts with a mix of violet, red, and fluorescent magenta, which works up to a mix of the magenta and pink. The edge highlighting here starts with a mix of magenta and pink, and adds a drop of white for the final pass. The last of the main colors is my second attempt at something like a non-metallic metal gold with the combination of Game Color Earth, Citadel Baylor Brown, and Model Color Golden Yellow. The technique here is no different from the blue and violet sections. The LBX Fenrir model I experimented with in my last video was my first attempt at non-metallic metal gold, so it was useful to have already gotten some practice in as well as figure out which colors worked best but I definitely still have some room for improvement. The final stage of painting is to give the swords, eyes, and a few other areas throughout the model a glowing effect. Since this Wing Zero will be on the same crew as Heavy Arms, I'm giving it the same turquoise glow, which also happens to be the same colors the base uses. All it takes are a few gentle layers progressing from Meridius Blue to Arcane Blue, then White, to get a bright looking effect. As I build up the gradient of the light source, I'm also very lightly glazing the surrounding area to simulate the glow effect. Once I finished with the turquoise glow, I applied some protective varnish and got ready for the beauty shots. Not yet! It's time to debut my first completed Gamma Wolves crew, the Antagonists. This Ronin crew of three costs exactly 500 materiel and features Barbatos, a heavy jet equipped frame operated by ace trained pilot Miyuki Charson. That's right, I've got my very own Char clone, red mobile suit and everything. The Grays, a medium frame operated by veteran pilot Satsuki Kano, inspired by legendary composer Yoko Kano whose works I often listen to whilst painting, and of course also inspired by... The Goof. 
it's literally just Rambarel. And he doesn't care that you all think Norris Packard's goof is better. Anyways, he's a veteran pilot in a medium jet equipped frame, you know. Now it's time to reveal the finished Wing Zero kit bash. I'm really satisfied with how the colors turned out here. I was worried at first that it would look too busy, but I think because I made the correct choices in color separation and placement, I was able to properly balance the dazzling array of gradients. My inspiration for this color scheme was the pansexual flag. Pride Month was in June, Liam. I just came out as pansexual. Wow. Some areas that I could have improved with are the posing, because at the time I was getting frustrated with the flimsy nature of this early real grade kit, but in hindsight I think I could have pushed myself to try a bit harder and get more of a dynamic pose. Also, I thought I was using matte varnish, but for some reason it came out looking more like a satin coat, maybe because I used up the last drops of the bottle or I contaminated it with some leftover mix from a different airbrushing session at some point, not entirely sure. But aside from being more of a dust magnet, I think it still looks great and is a worthy addition to what is eventually going to be the protagonist crew. One hot new model kit gets built, another completely different model kit gets painted. Classic millennial model mayhem, am I right? Did anyone figure out what the color scheme was before the big reveal? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this far into the video. It means a lot to me to be able to create whatever kind of videos I want, and the fact that you keep watching them means a lot to me as well. If you want to see more content like this, you can support me by using those Hobby Link Japan and Amazon affiliate links that I mentioned earlier, or you can give me that good old free social media engagement on Twitter, Instagram, or just sharing around here on YouTube. Please. Won't you give my pansexual Gundam a share? But by far the best way to support me is through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Like these lovely patrons. Shout out to the Mayhem Machine, Miles Burnside Clap, and Janelle, member of the Gog Hand. Wondering what's coming up next in the hobby content zone? Turn on notifications and find out. The algorithm demands that you lock on notifications and annihilate the like and subscribe buttons. And leave a comment.